Welcome back guys. Welcome to another session of uh, Shomu's Biology's uh, Cell Biology Lecture Series and this is about you know cell culture methods and in this video we will be talking about growing cells in culture media and actually we will be talking about the theoretical part of growing cells in culture media and what are the different properties that we need to take care of during those processes. Now in cell culture we know that the basic thing is we need to take the cell from the organism from the organ suppose we take the tissue from the organ we uh, just use a trypsinization process to delete all the extra cellular proteins that are present there outside or surrounding that cell and embedding uh, embedded proteins that are present in uh, cell membrane those proteins go away after that those cells are taken and put into the media they start to grow now so these are the stages if i begin with it we have the organism or organ so let's say let's say here it is a liver for example this is not very much very good drawing so let's say this is the liver and from here we take this cell and we go for a trypsinization process right trypsinization process and after this trypsinization process we simply place that uh, cell to the media here it is a uh, flask usually petri dishes are not used what we use in this case are flasks it will look something something like this some somewhat the flasks look like this so they have a room inside with which uh, which is filled with all the materials that are that are being required for the cell to grow and we just there is a cap here so if I draw cap here, so we just open the cap, put the culture inside and then allow it to grow in a particular incubation period time. So here say for simplicity I draw this as simple petri dish for viewing simplicity and then the cell is placed there. So once the cell is placed there, the cell will start to grow and divide, right. Now the growth of the cell in this tissue culture media depends on many important things among with that what is required most what two things that are required most one is you know nutrients all the macronutrients and micronutrients so both macronutrients and micronutrients macronutrients means those are very basic nutrients like carbon source nitrogen source micronutrients means other type of nutrients like you know uh, minerals and other things and another thing that is also required along with this is the growth factor growth factor is a thing with without which cell growth will not be possible because inside the cell growth factor is always coming from outside you know cells are producing their growth factors those growth factors have receptors onto the surface of the cell right so what happens each time that growth factor come and attach to the surface of the growth surface receptor that is present onto the surface of uh, the cell the cells start to proliferate because that acts as a signal right if you want to know how growth factor controls the cell growth cell division you may look into my youtube channel you can see videos about growth factor receptors videos about how cell signaling works using that growth factors examples of such growth factor is epidermal growth factor EDGF, you know platelet growth factor and so on many different types of growth factors are there they are uh, helping for the growth of certain types of cell in body that's why they are given different names like epidermal growth factor platelet derived growth fa factor that's PDGF and many more. So these are the two things that are required for the cell to grow. So once these two things are mixed there in the media culture media because these are the two things that are present in the culture culture media so they will easily grow but the growth again depends on other thing that is the amount of cell that we place there because if you place higher amount of cell the growth and uh, growth will be very faster because they will start doubling the cells and the cells will fill the vessel now this growth will occur until they fill the whole surface region or surface area. Remember we have talked before in the last videos that the cell growth can be of two different types. One is the 
anchorage dependent type another one is anchorage independent or suspension type for the anchorage dependent type that is the most common one here in this case we are also looking at the anchorage dependent type they require a solid surface onto which they will grow now in this case once the surface area is completely filled with cells the growth will be stopped right the growth will be halted it will be stopped there right so the reason or they will grow until so they will grow until what are the things the thing is all surface area let me simplify it all surface area are filled with cells and second thing is nutrient depletion so if all the nutrients are taken out or all the surface area are been filled then they will stop the growth right so these are the things that controls the growth pattern there so once any of this thing reach the cell growth will be halted now here comes an important part once they completely cover the surface area that means let's say here cells start to grow from all the directions and once it is covering the surface area that means cells are having direct contact with each other right as you can see here so cells are having direct contact with each other let me take this one so here we go cell cell contact start to build up as the medium become crowded the cell cell contact start to build up now the cell cell contacts creates contact inhibition now this is a property for the cell to grow because those cells which are anchorage dependent has this property of contact inhibition that means once they fill the particular region and one cell is attached with another cell from side by side in that case those cells cease their growth that is called the contact inhibition why due to different chemical signaling that is going on inside the cell it is not allowed once you are crowded the cell growth is not permitted it's not allowed that's the self retaining process from cells to maintain the population in a synchronized and homogeneous state that is what the process of in this case the contact inhibition occurs and cell growth ceases that's why it happens this contact inhibition is very very important because it will give you a homogeneous so one layer of cells you know that layer of cell is called as monolayer and using this phenomena this monolayer has been built and then we scrap off some of the cells from the monolayer if you scrap some of the cells from the monolayer what happens a region of the surface area becomes blank becomes free then this, they start to grow again and new cells start to fill that gap that what happens and this type of thing is very important to study certain type of cellular properties and those assays that are performed by scrapping of monolayer cells are termed as monolayer wound healing assays you, 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 if, if you want to know more about monolayer wound healing assay you can go to you know google and just type the name you can find the basics of it i will make separate video on monolayer wound healing assay later but that this this monolayer wound healing assay acts very importantly in many different uh, ex experiments especially the cancer research programs so this is it now once you know this uh, this is the way how cells grow now other properties of cells during this process remains that once you know it it will fill this whole surface area it uptakes all the nutrients they will cease the growth but suppose this process will take only 3 to 4 days and you just run out of the area where the cell will grow so it's a problem for cell biologists so what we need to do we need to take cells from this and place it to other media so that the growth continues so that we can take the cells and continuously study the experiments right or do the experiments on the cells so for that reason during this process once it start to fill out we need to take the cell and place it into the other media now from the previous media taking the cell and placing into other media this whole process is termed as passaging of cells so let me draw it for you that is called the passaging of cells so let's say here from this particular region we are taking cells 
and we are placing them here to other media and that thing and then the in new media cells start to grow and again start to fill and then again we will take the cell put it into another media media so the, this process of passaging is very very important passaging of cells right now this passaging is important and passaging is important once the previous medium becomes confluent confluent means the all the nutrient sources of the surface area of that medium is already taken up by the cells that is called the confluent condition now once the cell is trying to reach the confluent we need to take the cell and put it into another fresh media because you know this is fresh media and we'll put it into the fresh media and this process is termed as passaging to so take cell from the previous media and confluent media and put it into the fresh media to for the growth that is called the passaging so once this passaging is very very important why you know this passaging will help us to continuously study and grow the cell in lab that is very very important so this passaging ability of a cell depends on the cell type that we are using right now you know that all the cells we study you know primary cell culture whatever we've talked before it's hard to maintain the second thing is you know in finite cell cultures those finite cell lines that we're dealing there is the ability for the cell to grow and divide up to a certain level up to a certain time or cell divisions say and usually that division is 40 to 60 maximum 40 to 60 times dividing the cell so a cell have the capability for dividing 40 to 60 times now after that capability the cell loses all the capability to grow further even if we supply the source even if we supply the proper nutrients proper growth factor and every environmental factors still those cell fail to reproduce fail to be divided into two and that time is termed as you know senescence or aging of the cell right so after a particular number of time of division the cell becomes functionless there right so passaging is something which helps us to understand the cell type some cells have higher passaging value that means we can transfer the cells again and again and again for longer time some cells have low passaging value right now this this idea of passaging with the growth and development of those those cells is termed as hayflix phenomena so let me talk about the hayflix phenomena here so let us Hayflix phenomena means if we look at here a graph we can find the number of here is the passage number of passage here right number of cell and here you have a number of passage now actually the graph looks something like that it starts with something like this and it sequentially ultimately fall right so as we increase the number of passage after a certain time even if we provide all the nutrients and sources but still the cell growth will down the cell number of cell will go low and low right that means the cells are dying along with the number of passage so along with the number of passages cells are aging and cells are dying there right this is what is called as hayflix phenomena right and another thing also notice that if we take the cell from a healthy individual from a young individual that case the passaging capacity is more but if we take the cell from older individual or aged individual the passaging capacity is less that means the cells are already been aged so even if we take those cells put into the fresh media still they have low passage number right so that thing is can also be designated by a graph so again i'm drawing another graph here with the passage so say number of passages here and along with the aging or age here so what we'll find there say x y and it will look something like this straight fall like this that means if we take aged 
cell suppose say this is one which is a younger cell you know the passage number is high but if you take age cell the passage number is very very low right so this is another uh, important property with the passage number of aging so in a certain disease called progeria what happens the predominantly in early ages it it it, it has all the type of aging uh, properties all the type of aging symptoms start to associate in very early ages now in that disease if we take the cell from the from a person of containing proge progeria disease or having progeria disease in that case it was found that the cell will or have the passage number of only two three times then the cell will die then the cell is functionless so that is a very important insight so for for the cell process or for the cell culture whatever cell will pick we need to be very sure that the cell will pick must have the high passage number because it is it has been you know very hard to develop all the techniques it is very uh, you know complicated process it took some huge amount of time of your work and also it will take some huge amount of money so after doing all these things if you don't pick right cells then it is going to in vain right so that's why you need to be very careful about choosing the cells that it should have a high passage number so that we can easily uh, transfer the cells again and again and again over time and it, they will grow now about this passage number these are the normal type of cells but you know i have also talked about you know infinite type of cell line in infinite cell lines those cells are modified by chemical factors or physical factors in any, by any means they are cancerous now they produce their own growth factor so even if uh, the presence or absence of growth factor they can easily grow by their own now for those cells they do not grow like a monolayer what they do actually for the cancerous cell or for the infinite cells or the immortal cell lines so if we place them here they will grow so say if i draw uh, so monolayer cells so let me erase it it's not required here monolayer cells will grow something like this so if this is a surface monolayer cells will go grow like this but if that is a surface cancerous cell or infinite type of cells will grow like this so they won't actually stop dividing once the contact inhibition is done you know for monolayer cells once the contact inhibition is done they will stop growing but for the cancerous cancerous cells they won't stop growing and dividing and they will start forming like a tumor right so this thing happens there for the cancerous cell they don't follow the contact inhibition they don't follow and obey all the rules they will just grow and divide and they will give us so in case of this continuous cells or cancerous cells this infinite or immortal type of cells multiple passage number is there the passage number is very very high in normal case the passage number you know i have told you 40 to 60 maximum in this case it can be thousand or more more than thousand so you can see huge the example is hela hela cells it has already been cultured more than thousand times and still it is growing and growing and uh, researchers are working with this and not only they are growing but they are not showing any signs of aging any signs of senescence all the properties that was present in uh, in the first culture was retained after the thousand transfer thousand passage that's the interesting factor about this infinite or immortal cell lines right now why all these things are important because you know as we start taking and subculturing it right because every time we passages this is also termed as subculturing right so all the time once we are subculturing it we are compromising the ability so we are having we start from our cell that is our desired cell that's where that's what we want to study but every time we subculture it we are going further from the properties of a actual natural cell the properties might be changed if they can be changed over time because as we are going forward each time uh, we are passing or passaging the cells and passing the cells to the next generation what happens actually they lost some of the chemical factors they lost some of the genetic factors or many other chemical bio, biochemical biophysical changes start to accumulate and ultimately what happens sometimes after many number of passages though the cell can grow but still they have remarkable change in them and they don't have any kind of similarity with the start cell so in those cases we develop a new completely new cell strain what we begin with 
that have a huge differences it's just like the telephone game we used to play in the child you know you have a word you just whisper the word into your friend's ear and that friend is then transferring it to another friend and finally what we found that what we start with the word is completely changed at the end that's what it happens all the time in this case right so this is all about some huge important properties and i hope that's helpful thank you